I wanted to do um, a vlog and I wanted to show you one of the paintings I've been working on recently. This is a uh, small texture painting that I've been working on over the course of the past month. Um, it's about 15 hours of total painting time where I'm working on those, uh, all of these white lines and drops that you're seeing on the surface. And it took about another four to five hours to work on um, the, uh, the texture underneath, which is actually molding paste. And then on top of that, I did uh, oil paint with multiple layers. So that part, you know, all of it together is about 20 hours. Some of the other stuff that's really helped me through this process is thinking about a maker schedule versus a manager schedule. So um, a maker would uh, basically like I'm a maker, right? So um, I need time to really get into working on a project. If you're a manager, you're doing a lot more coordination with people. Maybe you have a meeting every hour and you're, you're kind of cycling through a lot of different things in the course of a day. There's not much that's going to um, as much right that's going to like disturb your workflow. Whereas if you're really trying to do deep work, you're trying to get into something, then, um, you know, as it says here, are the I've linked to this below the maker schedule, manager schedule. Ambitious projects are by definition close to the limits of your capacity. So if you're trying something that's very challenging for you, um, you want to make sure that you got the energy to work on it, that you got a nice block of time. And by that, I mean, like, probably at least two hours, at least an hour. It, you know, it's got to be a good chunk where you have enough energy. Um, Asian Efficiency, which is a podcast I listen to, they talk about this idea as well, which is T which is time, energy, and attention. So you have to have all three of those things or you're just not going to be, be able to make anything of value. Um, and when I'm talking about deep work, there's actually a book called Deep Work, and this is something that I really like. So I found the book Deep Work by Cal Newport to be really influential for me. It started to help me understand why... Um, I might have moved to working on projects that uh, maybe weren't quite as challenging to me, especially when I was at the torpedo factory. And um, someone could come at any time and uh, both watch me, which is fascinating, of course, from their point of view. Uh, but it is very distracting if you can't limit uh, when someone is going to disturb your focus. And that is something that they talk about in this book. And uh, one of the most fascinating concepts talking about the environment is the eudaimonia machine. Um, I've seen that pronounced a few different ways. I link to it below with a few articles so you can take a look at what they're talking about. Um, but you, you, or I guess I should say eudaimonia, uh, it's, a, it's a word that basically means like human flourishing. Um, but the eudaimonia machine is a, um, it's basically a series of rooms and I'll link here to um, a little diagram kind of showing you what it is. And uh, the main problem is that, you know, in the torpedo factory, it's more in kind of a, uh, like I would probably say a salon where uh, people could come in and talk with me. And the point is to have this collaboration. But often to work on a painting, I need to be in the deepest room, the room for deep focus. Um, and so uh, that room is where I'm trying to spend most of my time now. Um, but looking at this diagram is really helpful to me too, because um, especially in this time of COVID, I have um, some more opportunities for this deep focus work, though there certainly are a lot of distractions at home. Uh, my husband has been home a lot more, so it is not as ideal an environment as if I was truly uh, just by myself. Um, but I'm finding that I'm having trouble finding um, the sources on the other end of the scale to feel that that balance of connection and um, get enough collaboration. So spending enough time in the library, I can't go to the library, <laughs> the salon, um, you know, uh, which would basically be like a coffee shop, like all of these environments um, can help us at different stages of our work. And while I was working on this painting, I was listening to the book uh, Daily Rituals, uh, Women at Work. 
I want to go back and listen to the first daily rituals, which did not have as many women in. And I think I think uh, in the foreword of the women at work version, he said that there were uh, it was only 17 percent women. So that is pretty low. I liked the daily rituals, the original book better, at least in my recollection, because it did go through all these different descriptions of um, some very eccentric ways uh, of how people worked, everything from, you know, one guy who, uh, like, he would stop, he would, it was on his walk um, from home from work, and he would be composing poetry in his head, and then at every um, street light, street lamp, he'd have a little, you know, notebook, and he would write in there the poem that he had been thinking of, and then he would continue on his way. And I just think this image is is so, you know, it's so nice, and that stuck with me for a long time. And one of the other ones, if I'm remembering it right, like he he had to be the only way he could write is if he was laying back on a couch and and was smoking a cigar and had like like a whiskey beside him or something like that. So like very um you know, very specific. Um, but, uh, yeah, I get a kick out of hearing all these different ways that people work, you know, while I'm trying to give a few guidelines of what I think generally helps people to make work. Um, I don't think that there is a one size fits all about how you have to approach things, especially when you're trying to be creative. So hearing about all these different ways people worked, I found, uh, really inspirational. And so it was a nice thing to listen to while I was working on my painting. So yeah, uh, that's the last thing I want to talk to you guys about during this uh, vlog. And I look forward to talking to you next time. Um, I'm going to be working on a much larger texture painting after this one. And once I got those two under my belt, uh, there is a jellyfish that is on the horizon on one of the painting surfaces I've already completed. So that will be a challenge. So look forward to that. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Okay, bye.